Now, many associate the use of flash with low light shooting situations, but it can also be a great creative tool to use during daylight. Today, we're shooting under a flyover here, so we're not quite in the blazing sun, but it's definitely not dark either. It's pretty well lit. And while natural light can be manipulated and directed to a certain degree with the help of reflectors and scrims, its intensity and angle can limit your freedom as a photographer over the images that you create. Shooting in strong daylight can also cause problems with overexposure in skies, leaving them void of detail, but it's something that can also be corrected through the use of flash. For these reasons, flash guns are something that many portrait photographers will take with them on location shoots. So if I show you what I mean, first of all, about overexposure in skies, uh, you'll see that we can have a real problem with trying to balance an exposure. So if I expose this image for Liv here in the foreground, we'll see that she's quite nicely lit, but the skies behind have just turned completely white, they're void of all detail, and they don't look particularly great. It's quite a flat image. That's something that we can combat by using flash. And how we do that is to just fit the flash gun first of all, switch to manual, and then I'm going to expose for the sky in the background. So I'm just going to change all my settings now to expose for the sky. And it's much, much brighter, so I'm dropping down the ISO and uh, just narrowing down my aperture a little bit. Okay, so we've exposed for the sky. Now normally, because when we were exposing for Liv before, she was well exposed and the sky was really bright. Now we've exposed for the sky. If we weren't using flash, Liv would appear really dark. But thanks to the flash, we can illuminate her and get a much more even exposure. Okay, so we can see in this image that both Liv in the foreground and the sky are properly exposed here. That sky is no longer void of all that detail and there's a bit of colour in there which is much nicer to look at than just that flat white space. Now the drawback to using flash on camera however is its fixed position directly above the lens. This can lead to harsh flatly lit shots and it can also cause unattractive shadows when shooting with a camera set to a portrait orientation. So if I show you what I mean by that, if I take a shot of the lip here the light that the flash is casting is creating quite a strong shadow uh, just to the side of her head. Now, one of the things we can do to create more even lighting in our images, so they haven't got the highlights like that first one we took, and they haven't got the harsh shadows quite as much, is if your flash gun has an adjustable head, we can try and use a nearby surface to bounce it off and just diffuse that light a little bit so it's not quite as harsh. So if I take another shot now, and I'm just gonna bounce the light off this wall, we'll see that we get some much more natural looking lighting uh, and it's, it's not quite as contrasted, it's not quite as harsh. The downside to this though is that you're still gonna struggle if you haven't got a nearby surface. If you're in a larger room or, or really out on location, you know, in a field or something, there's not gonna be an awful lot of things for you to bounce your light off. And that's where flash triggers come in. Now, basic flash triggers can be brought for just 30 pounds and they're available in most standard fits. What they allow you to do is to remotely trigger your flash from wherever you may be within reason. So if I press the test button now, you'll see that the flash is going off without me actually being anywhere near it. If I was to take a shot from here with on-camera flash, not only would we have limited control over where the flash gun was positioned, but the flashlight might not even reach the subject. If I take this image now, I'm at 70 mil and I'm some distance back from Liv, we can add in that extra light into this image in a way that just wouldn't be possible with natural light. If I take the same shot again, this time without any flash, you'll see that the light here is quite soft. And even if I was using a reflector to throw and cast a little bit more light back onto Liv's face, it wouldn't have that same contrasty look. So there you go, several reasons why a portrait photographer might use flash on location to level up difficult exposures and to enable creative lighting setups that just wouldn't be possible any other way. And if you've got several flash guns, you can invest in several triggers and come up with more and more complex setups that really bring studio lighting out onto location. I'll see you next time.